<laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Mark Hallett. I'm a um, uh, family physician and sports medicine physician. My role is uh, chief clinical officer for ThetaCare. That means that my primary accountabilities are for system safety and quality as well as integration of safety and quality with clinical leadership of our EMR. So it's, a, it's an honor to be here. Uh, for those of you who uh, are uh, not familiar with ThetaCare, we are a seven hospital 42 clinic uh, system in East Central Wisconsin. Um, that is a uh, 501c3 and um, uh, has been on a lean journey since about 2003. So I think, you know, to Peter's point about the stories and the culture, um, I think it's important to just back up a little bit and understand that our work in this area goes all the way back to 1998. Uh, we were one of the early adopters of the uh, IHI uh, IDCOP uh, project as well as uh, early adopters in advanced access. 1999, we were early adopters as a beta site for uh, what has now become EPIC. Uh, most of us use that now. And uh, we're also driving hard in terms of uh, quality for our health plan at that point, Touchpoint Health Plan. And really, that's where a lot of our uh, transparency and commitment to con continuous improvement uh, originated. In uh, 2003, we began our lean journey primarily with the revenue cycle. But in 2005, I was uh, honored to have the opportunity to co-lead our first uh, value stream, which was our orthopedic uh, value stream. Um, and then uh, later on, uh, 2006, began our primary care value stream redesign work. So, you know, understanding that scheduling is one process in an otherwise uh, uh, highly functioning continuous improvement system, uh, like Gary mentioned, uh, we're very uh, value stream focused. I would just uh, point out the, the uh, recent results. Uh, so uh, ThetaCare Physicians for five years running has been the top quality um, ambulatory uh, uh, group in the state of Wisconsin uh, at points uh, uh, 25 standard deviations ahead of mean performance in terms of chronic disease quality, which I would say our, our system is uh, ideally uh, designed to, to drive. Um, in addition, though, and more recently, uh, we were um, recognized as the top quality um, ACO, both out of the pioneers as well as the Medicare shared savings plans, as well as the lowest cost for two years running. So uh, that starts to look like value, which we're very uh, proud of. So I thought it would be helpful in terms of introductory comments to just give a few pertinent examples that relate <laughs> to scheduling and access. I think the first um, one that I would point out has to do with our Orthopedics Plus value stream. What this, uh, so again, this was 2005. It, it achieved marked improvements in orthopedic access through, um, as well as productivity and patient experience by uh, co-location of uh, orthopedics with primary care sports medicine. Um, what that essentially reinforces is uh, is, you know, given the fact that most orthopedic care is non-surgical, is an example of care at the right level, uh, which uh, maximally utilizes uh, um, available professionals. Three examples from our primary care value stream. I think our first one, um, which is directly um, uh, germane to the conversation today, um, our scheduling process actually begins with a single question when we uh, get a patient calling on the phone and that question is, would you like to be seen today? That um, <clears throat> recognizing that, that uh, patients have different uh, needs and uh, uh, different behaviors and in fact, those behaviors, be it uh, speed sensitive or relationship sensitive, uh, aren't static, they're, they're dynamic and they, they change based on the situation. That essentially eliminates the classic uh, goalie uh, type triage process and really puts the focus on getting them access uh, wherever uh, we can find that access uh, within the system uh, that meets their needs uh, for speed sensitivity. The second example would be what I would refer to as our middle flow work. So in our primary care value stream, the middle flow is the, is the portion of the visit that uh, in which the provider actually um, has the visit with the patient. 
We've done a, a tremendous amount of work to reduce waste from that visit because, you know, essentially um, our macro systems are an aggregation of clinical micro systems. And so removing the waste at the individual provider and uh, cell area is extraordinarily important. Once we do that um, and through um, uh, timings of, of uh, prep work and visit times as well as post-visit documentation time, we're able to actually work backwards to design templates that are sustainable and that uh, providers can um, work through and stay on time, uh, which obviously uh, helps with the patient experience. Last example I would give uh, would be our work with um, in-visit lab work. Um, so we uh, currently are at about 65 or 70 percent of labs that are drawn at, at patient entry into the clinic are turned around within um, 15 minutes, which was a, a pretty significant piece of, of uh, internal re-engineering, and, and the balance are uh, turned around within 20 minutes. If we combine that and then the conversations with patients that ensue out of that, and then um, also on the back end of the visit, um, develop a plan of care with the patient, which is complete at the time the patient leaves the clinic, uh, that those uh, markedly reduce the amount of callbacks, the, the amount of unnecessary visits, and, and really is a form of uh, shaping demand uh, going forward. So the, so the planning for the next visit actually uh, occurs at the end of the visit um, in front of uh, in front of the patient at the at, at the present time, so just a just a few lessons learned. I, I really um, um, don't think there's any substitute val for value stream thinking here. I mean, point optimization uh, focused on scheduling won't solve the problem of 10 pounds of potatoes in a five-pound bag. It just it won't. So we have to think differently. Um, the scheduling process, it, again, clinic operations. Um, it's a complex adaptive system. So our key question uh, these days is what processes need to be working in order for us to achieve our target, in this case, for scheduling. So what are the sub-processes that need to feed into and be optimized so that our scheduling work can occur the way uh, we are uh, attempting to, uh, to, to pull it off? I think at the same time, you know, at the same time we need process improvement, we also need to respect the fact that there's clinical content within all these processes, and I think that's a key element when we merge medical care and, and uh, system engineering, and I think that that part is the part I think oftentimes we trip ourselves up with uh, when we um, are somewhat dismissive about the clinical content within these processes. From a provider standpoint, scheduling is nearly sacred ground. It, uh, it's a driver of not only professional goals um, like compensation and esteem, but also personal goals like getting to your child's soccer game. So that's how important uh, scheduling is. And you know, I think we need to get much, much better at process improvement so that we can get out of the cycle of, of hypermanagement that many clinicians um, uh, currently used to approach their schedule because it is we, we need to help clinicians get over the hump of um, understanding and engaging with and and actually trusting processes more so than they trust their um, uh, uh, own hypermanagement of their schedule which is is uh, doomed to failure and finally I I think that as we think about our current model of care I would describe it, especially as we move more uh, into a, a value-based world, uh, our current model of care is really a one-trick pony. It, it is, uh, in our case, particularly well-designed for chronic disease care, but it is underpowered uh, to meet the needs of complex patients, uh, and, uh, and that's where heroism and lack of sustainability from a clinician standpoint uh, comes in. It also is... Um, overpowered that is too expensive for the acute needs um, and preventive needs for healthy patients as well. So I think I'll wrap it up there. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Very insightful. And uh, we'll now go to David and Tara.